Ciao, come stai? Mi chiamo Andrea, and by now you can tell I'm not Italian, and today I would like to teach you how to balance ammonia plus oxygen gas yields nitrogen monoxide plus then water. So how do we do this? Simply place in some lines to the left of each particular uh, molecule here. This will represent the location of our coefficients. All right. The next thing to do is to keep in mind the general principle that whatever elements I have here on the left-hand side must balance whatever elements I have here on the right-hand side. Left and right are simply defined by the position relative to this yield sign. So what I'm going to do is first work with the element I first see working from left to right. So I have a nitrogen. Now I want to balance nitrogen if it exists in only one compound on the left-hand side and it exists in only one compound on the right-hand side. I want to work with that first. Let's say you started with oxygen. Okay, Oxygen exists in this one compound on the left, but it exists now in both of these compounds on the right. I would not work with that first. That's the example I would not work with. Save those for the end. Okay, so let's balance nitrogen. So you got one nitrogen here on the left, you got one nitrogen on the right, that's where the uh, subscripts come into play. If you don't see a subscript, it's assumed to be a one. All right, so they're balanced already. One balances one. Easy enough, move on. Next, I'm gonna take a look at the hydrogen. So I have three hydrogens here on the left, and when I look at hydrogen on the right, I have two hydrogens. Remember, it's also in one compound on the right, and it's also in one compound on the left, so I like to work with that, all right? I'm gonna work with that first. Now we have to balance this. Obviously three does not equal two. So we have to balance it. Now there's a shortcut. You can do this mathematically, with, which is very beneficial by the way, but I'm gonna do another example here um, uh, using a more technical math uh, technique. In this particular case, how I'm gonna balance this is simply like this. Whatever the subscript is of that element on your left-hand side becomes your coefficient for that same element on the right hand side. Okay, so I put in a three there. Same principle, whatever subscript you have for that element on the right hand side becomes the coefficient for that same element on the left hand side. Now, what happens? Well, let's take a step back and look. So here now, what you did was you have two multiplied by three, because you have, remember this, this represents ammonia. In every single ammonia, you have three hydrogens, but now you don't have one ammonia, you have two of them, right? So if you have two ammonias, you have NH3, and then you have another NH3, how many hydrogens are there in total? Just simply count it up, you got six, right? Now you can also think about that multiplicatively. In other words, two times three is a total of six, and three times two then is a total of six as well. So they're balanced. Right, you got three waters on the right-hand side, and in every water there's two hydrogens. So you should have six hydrogens. All right, so hydrogens balance. But now you might say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Andrew. Now I screwed up the nitrogen. Yes, you did, but who cares? Go back and balance it, right? No big deal, don't worry about it. Now take a look, how many, let's go back and let's balance the nitrogen. How many nitrogens do you now have on the left? Well, you have one nitrogen in every ammonia, but you have two ammonias, so you have two nitrogens. And then how many nitrogens do you have here on the right-hand side? Well, you still have one, so what do you gotta do? Put a two here, right? Because two times one will now balance. It'll be a total of two nitrogens. See how nice and simple that is? All right, so now the nitrogen's balanced. You went back and checked it, and the hydrogen's balanced. What's the only element that's left to balance? Your oxygen, okay? Now this one's gonna be a little, possibly a little more mathematical, ready? So let's write down the total number of oxygen we see on the left-hand side, which is two. That has to equal now the total number of oxygen you have on the right-hand side. Now since oxygen is the last one I'm working with, I don't have a choice, but I gotta work with both of these now, okay? Now once you place in a coefficient, please take that into account for the total number of oxygens you have. And the total number of both, it doesn't matter. All right, you gotta take it into account. So you do have a subscript of one here for oxygen, but you have two of these molecules. Therefore, you have two oxygens in that compound, and you also have how many oxygens in your water? For you have, remember, you got three waters. Every water, there's one oxygen. So you have simply three oxygens, okay? Now, Obviously, this math equation doesn't work at the moment. Two does not equal five. So your job is to now figure out, you have this coefficient you wanna place, and I'm gonna call it X, because we gotta figure it out. You have a choice of where to place it. There's really one of three spots. You either place it here, you place it here, 
or you place it here because that's the only way you're going to get oxygen to balance. All right. Now, one of those three is not like the others. All right. And one of those three is better than the others. Which one would it be? Where do we want to place the coefficient? If I have a choice, I would like to place the coefficient here. Now, why do I want to place the coefficient here? Well, it's because if I start placing this coefficient over here, I screw up the nitrogen. Now, that's going to be a bit of a pain because then I've got to go back and balance the nitrogen, and then I'm going to screw up the hydrogen, right? So I really would rather not do that, okay? And same thing over here. I just, I'm at the point of where if I just can balance the oxygen, I want to do that. I don't want to mess everything up, okay? Sometimes it's okay, just like I did with the hydrogen and the nitrogen before. That's not a big deal. But now I'm so close to the end, I really don't want to mess everything up. So what this is now telling us is that some value here multiplied by 2 better equal the total number of oxygen on the right-hand side. So how do you write that mathematically? It's simple. 2 times some number all right, better equal now the total number of oxygen on the right-hand side. And this is a simple now math equation. It's just 2x equals 5. Divide out the 2 from both sides. Now x equals 5 halves. And then you're like, oh man, this was nice until I saw this fraction. And what is he doing to me? Well, I'm trying to make your life easier, although it might not seem that way at the moment. Okay? So we're going to place in 5 over 2. All right? 5 over 2. Now, technically, this is done. Okay? Technically, we are balanced. Well, technically, we are balanced. We're not done, though. Technically, this is balanced. Everything is balanced now. Okay, there's only one issue. You cannot have a fraction of a molecule. You can't. It's like having a fraction of a person. What does that even mean? Right? You can't have a fraction of a molecule. And therefore, I have to do one more step. Now, you might say, well, man, is there another way to avoid the step? I mean, we could, but honestly, I think this is the easiest way. Because whatever the denominator value is of your fraction will represent the value you're going to multiply each coefficient by, okay? It's as simple as that now. Once you get a fraction here, take your denominator value, in this case it's 2, and you multiply every single coefficient value by 2, every single one, okay? So now, let's take a look at the first one. What's 2 times 2? Obviously, that's 4. So erase it and write in a 4. Now, what's 2 times 5 halves? Well, it's simply going to be 5, okay? You look at it this way, 2 times 5 halves. Remember, this is really 2 over 1. Multiply the numerators, that's a total of 10. Multiply the denominators, that's a total of 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times, so that becomes 5 over 1 if you wanted to think about reducing it, right? And that's just a total of 5. That's it. It'll always work out that way, actually. You don't even have to do all this math, right? It'll always be whatever that numerator value was, okay? So it's a total of 5. What's 2 times 2? Obviously 4. And then what's 2 times 3? Obviously a total of 6. And now this is fully balanced. Fully balanced, lowest coefficient ratioed, we're done. You can also go back and check if you want, right? How many nitrogens do you have now? We have one here, but you got a coefficient of 4, so you got a total of 4 nitrogens. How about here? We have a subscript of 1, you get a coefficient of 4, so a total of 4 nitrogens. That's balanced. How about the hydrogen? Now watch, two times, uh, excuse me, 4 times 3 is 12. And how about over here? 6 times 2 is 12. All that balances. Now, how about the oxygen? We got 10 oxygen here, and then you got 4 oxygen here, and then you got 6 oxygen over here. So 10. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's all balanced. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. We really love to help you out with more stuff. We got thousands of other videos out there for you. All right, mathematics, physics, chemistry. We got a lot of other stuff coming out too. All right, so stay tuned. We'd love to help you out with more stuff. Check out our channel, and if you can, recommend us to your friends. All right? Um, yeah, I look forward to helping you with more problems. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.